Hey, I'm Dr. Greg, the Grass Doctor. Today I'm going to talk to you about the wonderful thing known as tall fescue. So I think tall fescue gets a little bit of a bad rap. It, people think of tall fescue and they think, isn't that that pasture grass, big ugly grass, light green? Yeah, it is, absolutely it is. That grass is known as Kentucky 31. It has super wide leaf blades. Uh, it's a big plant, it grows like crazy. There's just not a whole lot of good things to say about it. The turf type tall fescues on the other hand are a totally different animal. They're in a completely different class. So on this side, this is a old Kentucky 31 plant. There's some good things about it, fine for pastures, but for lawns, you don't want this. So when you're walking through the seed aisle and you see Kentucky 31 tall fescue, keep on walking. This grass is a turf type tall fescue. Look at the differences in size between them. We've got a really large leaf the Kentucky 31 and then the turf type tall fescue that I'm holding in my uh, right hand here this one is probably a 15 year old grass but it's so much better than that Kentucky 31 that's in my left hand the turf type tall fescues that have been released in the last few years are even finer bladed than this one that's about 10 or 15 years old and so they're prettier and prettier and prettier all the time they actually look a lot like Kentucky bluegrass when they're in the lawn. They're super dense, they're dark green, they're fine textured just like a Kentucky bluegrass lawn and so there's a lot to like about turf type tall fescues. A lot more than just the prettiness of it. We'll get into why this grass is such a great lawn grass. One of the things that I like about turf type tall fescues is that they're super drought tolerant. So what you're seeing here is the green stuff is tall fescue. The brown stuff is Kentucky bluegrass. So we had a really really dry summer. I don't irrigate and so this really thinned out went away. The Kentucky bluegrass did and the tall fescue stayed green. All right here are some of the things I really like about turf type tall fescues. One they're, they've got a great dark green color to them very similar to Kentucky bluegrass or perennial ryegrass. Another thing I like about tall fescues is that you don't need as much fertilizer to keep them looking great. Really on a lawn, only two pounds of actual nitrogen per thousand square feet per year uh, will do most lawns and, and uh, keep them looking great. It has really good wear tolerance. Uh, it'll take a beating from dogs or kids running around on it uh, before it starts to thin out. It has really good shade tolerance, much, much better than Kentucky bluegrass. Matter of fact, I think uh, a lot of the turf type tall fescues today have as good as or better shade tolerance than fine fescues. Requires less water than Kentucky bluegrass lawns. You'll be running your irrigation less frequently with a tall fescue lawn, but depending on where you live, you may not even need to run your sprinklers at all to keep tall fescue looking fine. It also has excellent heat tolerance. You'll see turf type tall fescues growing across the upper mid-south through North Texas, Oklahoma, through Arizona, New Mexico, and California. Excellent heat tolerance. And the last thing I really like about the tall fescues is that they can come infected with an endophyte. An endophyte is a fungus that uh, has a symbiotic relationship with the plant, takes nutrients from the plant, but gives back stress tolerance, things like disease tolerance and insect tolerance. As I mentioned, tall fescues have excellent heat tolerance, so we'll see them across some of the southern locations of the country, but also have really good cold tolerance. As a matter of fact, better and better all the time. We're seeing tall fescues in northern states where they've never recommended tall fescues in the past. All right, let's break down how to identify tall fescues. If you don't remember some of the terms that I'm using here, go back to part one of the How to Identify Grass series from The Grass Doctor and refresh on some of the terms that I'm using here. But starting up at the top of the plant, if the seed head is there, look for the seed head. Usually that helps to, to uh, give it away. Uh, if the seed head is not there, we're gonna look for the vernation. With tall fescue, the vernation is distinctly rolled. It's very easy to see because the leaves are a little bit bigger than some of the other plants that we're talking about. Next, I'll look at the leaf blade itself. The leaf of tall fescue is very veiny. It's a very stiff bladed plant. The veins on the leaves very much stand out. On the sides of the leaf, you'll see, if you look really closely or with a hand lens, you'll see little jagged edge. It's got a serrated edge to it. 
One thing that I've always used to identify tall fescue and I've taught my students over the years is grab a blade of grass that you think might be tall fescue and just kind of stretch it between your two hands and then rub it back and forth on your lip. Your lip is very sensitive and so what you'll feel is the little serrated hairs that are on the, uh, the sides of the leaf, but it, it'll grab and pull on your lip. And so if you feel that on your lip, it's a dead giveaway that it's tall fescue. You might look like a wacko in somebody's lawn doing that, but anything that you can use to get the job done to uh, figure out what the grass is, is beneficial. Moving on down to where the mature leaf folds away from the plant, you'll see some uh, hairs in that region around the collar area. You'll see a very, very small ligule. Actually not seeing it can be an identification characteristic. You'll also see oracles. Oracles are little appendages that wrap around the stem of the plant. You won't find oracles on a lot of the grasses out there. On the back side of that mature leaf, you'll find the collar. And the color of tall fescue is continuous, which means that light green area stretches from one side of the leaf all the way across to the other side. Pull a plant up out of the ground and at the base of the plant, look for a purple coloration in that area. That's very common in fescues and ryegrasses. Great identification characteristic. No grass is perfect and tall fescue is no exception. There are some things that I don't really like about tall fescue. Even though they've improved, the leaf texture might not be quite as fine as Kentucky bluegrass. Certainly the cold tolerance is not as great as Kentucky bluegrass, but Kentucky bluegrass's cold tolerance is crazy awesome. Most of the recovery you're going to see from tall fescue, once it gets thinned out, is from tillering. Most of them are considered bunch type grasses and so they fill in an area much, much slower than grasses that have rhizomes or stolons like Kentucky bluegrass or Bermuda grass. And finally, the, the last thing that I don't really like about tall fescues is that they're fairly susceptible to the disease brown patch. Breeders are working on this to improve their tolerance to brown patch, but there certainly are some cultivars out there that are susceptible to brown patch. Because tall fescue is such a tough grass, it's deep rooted, has great drought tolerance, it doesn't need a whole lot of nitrogen. It's got great heat tolerance. It's got great traffic tolerance. There's a whole bunch of great things about tall fescue. And for that reason, I've been recommending it for lawns in the transition zone for years. But since breeders have made it even better, the texture of it now is similar to Kentucky bluegrass. And so it's prettier than it ever was before. They have varieties now that are able to spread, and so they recover from damage much better than older tall fescue varieties did. We're seeing better cold tolerance, and so we're seeing varieties recommended in the far north of the United States, uh, even into places like Ontario and Canada, uh, where tall fescues are doing just fine. And we're getting tall fescues that you can mow down to as low as a half an inch, which is crazy for a tall fescue. And uh, so we're seeing more and more tall fescues being used in golf and on athletic fields. Because of all these reasons, tall fescue is easily one of the best grasses for lawns and even uh, other uses of all the grasses out there.